Hi guys, welcome back to my dad's channel. Before we get started, click that subscribe button and give me a huge thumbs up. Today I'm going to uh, do, <laughs> do a video on sorting out the alignment on my Porsche box there. I took my box there for a wheel alignment and uh, I wasn't happy with the camber I've ended up with on the rear wheels. So I've ended up with minus 2.5 degrees and I uh, don't think it's going to be the best for traction and for tyre wear. On the front I got minus 1.5 which is what I wanted. Um, but both front and rear wheels, I got five millimeter spacers, um, and the wheels are still quite tucked under the arches. Um, so I need to sort out a way of uh, sorting out the rear camber. I've already got adjustable toe arms, which usually is what you need to get your camber within spec, but it's not it's not done the job on this. So, I've decided uh, to get some uh, Powerflex control arms for the front and rear that have adjustable bushes in them and I'll be able to uh, hopefully improve, improve the alignment to get the most out of the car. Uh, on the front, my alignment is done with a um, adjustable top mount on the coilover, but that tucks the top of the wheel in. I would rather increase the track at the bottom to give the camber, so that's why I've got the lower arms for the front. Alright, these are the uh, bits I got from Powerflex. I decided to uh, to go for complete suspension arms rather than just buying the bushings. Reason being, my car's got 105,000 miles on the clock and so it seems a bit daft to fit aftermarket bushes into control arms that have done that sort of mileage because the ball joints aren't replaceable. Um, so I could have bought just the bushes from Powerflex but it's a lot of work to fit them in. Uh, you need a press, which I haven't got. You need to burn out the old bushes um, or drill them out. And it's, it's just a lot of faff. So I've decided to get them pre-built so they're ready to go straight on. So this is the, uh, the offset hole, which is then adjustable. You can turn that. spanner so you can reach in when it's on the car, turn it and tighten up the bolt to lock in your desired camber. Very nice. So that's the rear. Got a washer there. Right, the fronts are a little bit different you've got adjustable caster on the front arms so you can keep it all within factory specs because when you uh, change the track rod in the length of it you'll knock your caster out so that gives you a chance to put it back where it should be So that's the uh, the adjustable car. So you've got that's the original in the middle, and then that one's offset. So you then adjust it around to get it where you want it. That's your offset hole there. Nicely made. And then just to finish it off, whilst I was yeah, and these I thought I might as well go for some anti-roll bar bushes, front and rear. So 
So just to tighten things up a little bit. Now they're simple to fit. So I'll get all this on the car and see how it is. This is the current setup. The uh, blue arm is a hard race adjustable rear toe arm. So the bottom wishbone is standard. That's the camera adjuster. That one's not maxed out, but on the other side, it's all the way maxed out. And I can't remove enough camber. Now, oh, this is what I need to replace. Been fighting this arm trying to get it in, it won't go all the way in. And then I realized there's a rib that the adjuster is sitting hard against. I'm going to slightly trim that rib so the arm clears. That's the arm moved inboard as much as possible. Let's see up there. Now, I'd originally planned to not run these factory bolts with the cam on them. I was going to lock them. We would just make um, make a plate that would just bolt up and lock it in one position. But this tool doesn't fit in. 
you can't can't get it in. So you can't adjust these arms in situ. You've got to pull them forward so you can get the spanner on from this way. So that means that if I got rid of the the cam bolts, I'd, I'd stand no chance of getting the alignment sorted. That's it. Time to uh, drop it on the floor and talk them all up. Getting the old suspension arms off isn't proving so easy on the front. Uh, the inner bolt is seized. I've got it halfway out, and then it's just the bush is turning inside the arm now, so it's not going to come out any further. So I've invested in a new power tool to hack it out. So I've learnt the hard way. I spent hours trying to get the bolt out of the lower control arm that was seized. You've got poor access and uh, I ended up cutting it out. And then when I went to change the anti-roll bar bushes I suddenly realised they're not like on a 986 or a 996 where you access them from underneath. They're above and you can't really swap them out without dropping the subframe anyway. So it was a total waste of time. I should have just dropped the subframe with both the coffin arms on them and then attacked it whilst it's off the car. And you can see here all of the corrosion inside the mount. That's really bad. And it chewed right through. Right through the uh, the bush in. So I'm going to have to clean that up. And then I'll replace the uh, coffin arms this way. Live and learn. Right, so I've got the front subframe back on and everything's bolted up. Now, that's how you got the arms. I wasn't sure what I'm doing with the caster, so I've put it offset and then the adjusters at the top. And so we'll get that sorted out when I go for the alignment. That's the adjuster there. For the camber. So we'll find out how difficult this is to get set up when I go for the alignment. Hopefully uh, it's not too bad. The alignment took four hours in the end, uh, there was a, a few uh, difficulties. For the camber adjuster on the front arms, when they come supplied, they're on the same side on each arm, so the arms aren't sided. So when if you, if you fit them straight out of the box, you've got one adjuster that's pointing 
to the front of the car, one adjust this point into the rear of the car. And I left them like this. And uh, you've got the anti-roll bar in the way if you've got the adjuster point to the front. And to get around that, we had to take the under tray off and it was just really difficult to get it adjusted. So if I was to do it again, I'd pop the adjuster out, flip it around and put it back in the other side just to make the alignment easier. I'm thankful to Indigo GT for going the extra mile and getting the alignment how I wanted it. Uh, it was a lot of effort. We ended up uh, finishing about eight o'clock in the evening. So I think three and a half hours after they're supposed to close. So that's a good one ready. So I'm very happy with the result. The car is brilliant out on the road. Uh, it's got razor sharp turning. Uh, the, the traction is brilliant. Uh, it's just, it's a beast. I'm so pleased. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.